Hi all, in this video we are going to learn about streams. Basically, we have learned about the I.O. streams, where you will found that we have C in, we have C out, we can input, we can um, display the output using the libraries called I.O. streams. And in this video, we are going to learn about the F streams. F stands for file, file streams. It is also same as I.O. stream, we have input streams, which is referring to the source of the file, and then output stream, which is referring to destinations. So, um, in order to understand more, input stream, which is referring to we get the input from a file. Output streams means that we are going to write to the file. Okay, so, um, yeah, please uh, try your best to understand it, yeah? Then we are going to learn about how to read from file, how to write to file, and how to save a file. Indirectly, we will learn how to save a file. So the scope of the study, which cover text file only. Um, we may have binary files, we may write or read from um, image files, okay, but it is not covered in this video. In this video, we will cover .text and .dat formats only, where we can save um, data or information into the text file. And the concept is quite easy where you have to first define the header file and then after you have defined the header file you must know where is that particular file have located in your pc or directory and then you have to define whether you want to write to the file or you want to read from the file and after that start your coding and then lastly you have to close the file so basically it's like you have a book okay you got the new book you want to write something inside you have to first open the book but before you open the book, you must know where is the book. Okay, get the book, open the book, write, or you may read, and then you must close it uh, before you close the program. Okay, but closing a file is optional because once you have um, terminated your terminate your exe file, the memory cache will be released. Okay, but to be to be good practices in the writing programs, it is good for closing the file before end of the program. So let's try for the coding part. All right, so this is the basic um, C++ code. In order to use the file stream, we must have include file stream. All right, and then we define a string, maybe as file name. Um, assume that we are going uh, uh, assume that we are going to open a file which is called readme.txt right after you have we have know the file this is the file we are going to open uh, we are going to declare whether we want to write or want to uh, read from the file but now in my case I don't have the file I don't have the readme.txt file so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a file okay where we, this is referring to output file streams um, of stream okay I give a name for the variable that I have to declare uh, out file okay so the out file dot opened we can open the file where we have declare okay and then immediately we close it here line 12 all right so we open it we close it and then over here we can do whatever we want okay we can write to the file so now this out file since you are very new into this uh, f streams for your information that the out file can can perform like c in c out okay it's up to you how you want to um, use it for an example now my tax is of output to the file so output means c out all right i can write something to my file maybe um hello world oops okay i write a message call hello world to the file compile and run if you found that the prompt message has shows nothing except press any key to continue okay close it now open the directory this is a directory folder click and open it you will found that this is where we have saved our .cpp file our um, exe file and so on okay created by the visual studio so we have readme file where this readme is referring to this readme.txt 
README. Okay, when we double click to open, so you found that the message hello words is here. So you can write any message. You can put any message, for an example, um, new line, and then I have a tab, All right, and run again. You found that the readme.txt have been updated with a new line, with a tab, and then the message. So this is how we write um, message using the cout style. Okay, using the cout style. We also can write variables, um, message via variables, such as I declare string message zero uh, one. Welcome to UMS. Okay, and then my second string. Welcome to FCI. All right. Uh, I try to insert one more line here, one more new line here, and then now I can just see out to the text file. Okay. Compile and run. All right. No error. Then we check again the readme.txt file. You will found that hello world is here. Hello world is here, and then welcome to UMS, welcome to FCI. Okay, so it's up to you how to program. This is the way how we write to the file. And one more thing I have to, uh, you, you have to pay more attention is if you realize when we compile and run, the file will be uh, writing with these messages. And these messages are actually writing from here. But what about if, just in case we want to append the file, we want to add something at the bottom. We want to close this file and then we want to update it. Okay, this is what we call as append. All right, for an example, um, now I already have hello world, hello world, welcome to UMS, welcome to FCI message. Okay, I already have this in my text file. So next, I want to add on over here line five, line six, but I don't want this message. All right, I want to uh, input something like this okay this is my message and then all right i want to add this one and two lines over here become line five line six data but when you compile when i compile and run this you will found that you found that the data have been overwrite. My previous information have been overwrite. So this is happening okay, with the C++ program. In order to append it, we must include this code, app. This will tell the compiler that the previous message should be there, maintained. Okay, And then we want to add on this. So let's try it again. Um, I remove this. From my file, I put other info. Okay, so now what we will be happen is these two message will be maintained, and this hello world, welcome to UMS, welcome to FCI, should be append, should be added to line three, four, five, and six. With this iOS dot dot app means append. Okay, we compile and run. All right, done. We check the readme file, you will found that the message has been append to the text file. Okay, um, and then next thing I want to, you have to take notes about this one, file name. So for this, we assume that the file, the text file, is in the same directory as the exe file. Meaning that when you open this folder, .cpp file is here, the exe file is here, the readme file is here. But in some of the cases, we might want to store the file somewhere else. Maybe in your D drive, E drive, or maybe in your C drive, but other folder. Mm, user. Something like this. Okay. And then uh, desktop, probably. You will find that when you type this, when you type this, there are errors here. Okay. The errors 
happen because of this backslash backslash uh, cannot be simply used in C++ in order to call the, the backslash we have to put double backslash okay so you must remember this right we found that the error have been removed so now if I compile and run okay the file will be saved in this folder in my C drive folder is called user came on desktop and then the file is this one okay this is the second case and the third case could be we request the user to tell us about the file name because some of in most of the cases we do not know what is the file name we may request from the user if that is the case we don't declare it we don't declare and initialize it but we request from the user we see out the message please enter file name okay after that we see in to the variable called file name so now our file name um, is is rely on the user input if the user insert read 01 then the file name will be read 01 isn't it but there is no extension there is no format for the particular file so we have to define the format ourselves okay so it's up to you whether you want to define it as .txt file or you want to define it as .bat file both file are acceptable right so now if i compile and run this file i'm requesting uh, the user to enter the file name let's say read 01 enter then done so what will be happen is the compiler will add the dot date file format to my read 05 read 01 file okay after that it will write everything to that particular file so in order to double check whether it's correct or not click the directory to open the file you will found that um, my in my directory i have one more file added just added read 01 and the message are printed in this file. All right, so after we have learned how to um, write to the file, in some of the cases, you may need to rearrange the information in your file, uh, especially for accounting purpose, you may need to set how many decimal, how many um, spaces for the particular digit. Uh, we may have three um, decimal point, four decimal point, five decimal point, and so you have to set the spaces or the distance between between each of the uh, between each of the data. Then you may need to use set w, set width, set the fill, left, right, fix, set precisions. All of these you have learned it in chapter two. Okay, so this is the way how we write to the file. All right. Uh, in the next section of this video, we are going to read from the file. All right, please refer back to your chapter 2 for more info about all of this function. Basically, reading from file and writing to file having the same concept, where the first thing you have to do is you define the header file. After that, we have to know where is the particular file located. So what should we do is we declare the variables, like what we did just now, um, string, file name, and then what is the file you want? Let's say I use read02.txt. That is the file I want. So next I want to read from the file. So read from the file we use if stream. Not all stream anymore. Okay, we define a variable. So we define as int file and then int file equal to uh, sorry dot opened. Um, the file name All right and then after that don't forget to close the file okay so that is the basic that is the basic way how we declare whether it is input file or whether it is output file again if input file we have to read only we read only from the file we can't write if output file means that we write to the file all right now um, for reading from the file it is a good practice if we can have an if statements to check whether the file is open or not because if we want to read the content from the file sometimes we are not sure whether the particular file is exit or not so it would be good practice to have if the file is open we do this 
if the file is not open, then the compiler will tell, tell us that it is unable to open the file. At least we know that the program failed to find the file. Okay, then, then you have to double check again your code. So how to read from the file? Okay, um, there are two cases happened. Case one is we know the content of the file and the content is arranged systematically. So what should we do is we have to declare some variables or arrays and then we assign the particular data to our array and we see out the results. Okay, let's say if we have a content of this in our file, either it's .txt file or .dat file, okay, and you found that the content having three strings, first string is ABC with a white space, second one is DEF, white space, and then GHI, white space, then next is new line. So what should we do? All right, so we can declare as string, we can declare a variable string content, and then in our program, what should we do is we have a while loop where the in file refer to the content, which means that the content, uh, the, the info, the string will be saved to the variable content. So in this case, it will first save ABC. It will first save ABC to the string. And then we see out the string. We loop again the while loop to display DEF. And then loop again the while loop, GHI, and so on. Okay, this is one way to capture all of the content. But in this case, you only can we only can capture the content and directly see out the results. Okay, so in fact, with this code, with this code, you must add n line or maybe a white space because string does not capture a white space. String does not capture a special character like um, new line, tab, or whatever. I hope this is clear. So the second way is we save the content into an array. And this is the code where we declare content string with an array of 100 size. This is the capacity of the array. So what is happening is in my while loop, in my while loop, I pass the string. Once I found ABC, white space, okay, this is the string. This will be saved in my content array index zero. And then I see out the result so I can see it. And I++, plus plus, I increase the array index to one. Okay, next we got DEF white space. So DEF will be captured and stored in the content index one. So this process will be repeat and repeat. Now we have an array that's having, uh, we, we, our, our array will be having all of the content, but not the white space, but not the new line. Okay, using an array. The third one is we use get chart where we declare as character. If we want to read the special character, every single line, every single white space, tab or whatever, then we must use get chart. Okay, so the, the how, how we write it is in file, which means that uh, the variables of the file that we have opened, and then we follow with dot get chart we get the chart, we get the info, okay? So besides get chart, we also have unget. You may have unget function to, um, to how to say, to avoid what you want to get, okay? If you want to get only integer, probably, you don't want to get um, alphabets, so you can use unget functions. All right? So the second way is if the content is unknown, then what should we do, right? So if the, sec the, the content is unknown, usually we will straight away go to get chart. We do not know whether the content is having integer or float number or strings or any special characters. So the best way is using get chart. Okay, we get everything from uh, the file, all right? And then we filter them using these six um, special character or special functions, sorry, special functions, where we can detect whether it is in digit, it is at alpha alphabet, or it is a lowercase, it is at uppercase, it is all numbed, 
or it is a space then what should you do let's say if if um, you get it is a string uh, sorry it is an integer you want to save it to another file or you save it in an array then you have to use is digit if it is um, alphabet you want to save it into string then we can use this uh, functions but you have to include the header file which is a cc type all right so what if i want to get i want to first retrieve the entire line and then process it line by line meaning that i want to get the first line second line and third line and process them so if you want to do that you have to use get line okay this is the function of get line refer to the input file name and then the string the line as string All right then you see out the whole line but in such a case in such a case you only can store the whole line temporarily in the variable called string line okay and of course you may extend this part if you want to go further all right that's all from me thank you very much and thank you for watching this video